What's going on? I'm getting more and more excited with them. Mostly because it's day 11. Day 11 is Far Cry 4. For anyone who doesn't know what Far Cry is, it's the next big open world shooter from Ubisoft. This brings me on to something that I said yesterday with Evolve where it might get lost behind shooters. Another first person shooter that we've got coming out this year. This is coming from Eurogamer. Eurogamer kind of had the first big story on it. Abandoning the sun scorched location of its predecessors, Far Cry 4 is coming this autumn and it will be climbing to the treacherous peaks of the Himalayas. The Ubisoft has announced that the latest game and its open world shooter will release on the 21st of November, all set in a perilous region named Karat. Sounds promising. Sounds great that we're going to move away from what we've known with Far Cry, which is always like a tropical island, beaches, Himalayan mountains. Brilliant. Love that. I think that's going to be great. Could we maybe see, maybe, I don't know, maybe new gameplay, maybe like rock climbing, and just like scale the rocks to get to different peaks. And then you could like use like the paragliders and all that stuff you had in Far Cry 3 to get over to different areas. Sounds very, very exciting. There's so many possibilities that this game could go with. Obviously, not bad sure this is known on the game just yet, as it only got announced like maybe a week ago. It's not even a week, I don't think, now, which is strange for Ubisoft because normally they would have announced their games well in advance, not like what, six months out. Ubisoft has, of course, confirmed that there will be the usual array of vehicles, weapons, and wild animals, the latter including elephants which according to Eurogamer, the lead character can ride. Intriguingly, the announcement claims that players will be able to write their own story across an exotic open world landscape. So I'm guessing that you're going to be able, maybe this one might even have multiple endings, maybe, because Far Cry 3 kind of had that, it kind of like, they tried to give you like, a choice ending at the end of the game, but it never kind of felt like it was needed, because you never had much choice up to then. It was a very linear story. Is there anything to take away from this that could be bad? Yes. I would say that after Far Cry 3, with us being... He was he was the villain. He may... He, he... For any game now, if you want a villain, it's got to live up to us. And it's got to live up to that performance that he gave as Vass, any game, because that performance that he gives is so great and it's so worthy as being, and makes it one of the greatest games of all time because of him and Hoyt, who plays the other villain, both of them give amazing performances and I have no doubt that whoever's playing the villain in this one, who according to Ubisoft is a despotic self-appointed king, so it kind of goes down the same route as the others, but um, so I, I think what they've done is they've realised that they had such a good thing with us, why change it, why not keep it as this insane power hungry man and just stick it in a new environment, stick it as far away from Far Cry 3 as possible so you don't look like you're copying it. But obviously the bad thing to take away from this is will people get on board with this as much as they did Far Cry 3? Because obviously I think uh, E3 you're gonna, they're going to have to show off something big for Far Cry to get people believing that they can top what they did with Far Cry 3. Came back with a vengeance and just showed why they know what they're doing with open world games. It's the reason that Ubisoft have got so... Uh, uh, gunning for these open world shooters and open world games. I mean they've got the division, they've got they've got two Assassin's Creed games this year, they've got Far Cry 4, and they're all probably gonna be shown at E3. Um, there's not much else that we can really say about the game as of yet because it only got announced a week ago. You probably would have seen the pictures now, but the picture of the main guy, he looks fucking terrifying. Because he's in that like all pink suit, but it's just so great with his hand on the guy's head. And it just shows him as being like the boss. He's just, he knows he has power over everyone else. And that is what makes me excited for this game. That they're going to take Vass, take that embodiment of Vass, and just step it up another level. But um, that'd be today. Tomorrow is the Game of Thrones Telltale game. Leave that till tomorrow. Uh, if you like this, click the like button. If you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button. 
Love you all. Take care. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing fine. Until tomorrow, goodbye.